Hi everyone, this is Jess from Multiplicity and Me and today we're doing our very first Educated lesson all about understanding dissociation and integration. You may remember some years ago when I promised that we'd be starting this project. In the upcoming months, I had this idea that I'd like to create a new part of the channel called Educated. Yeah, I know, I know, but I really like the name. I think it's really cool. <laughs> well, I'm sorry it's taken so long, but we are finally here. Da, 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 da. Oh. oh, God. So let's get started. Dissociative disorders are complex mental health issues with lots of things to know about them. In this episode, we're going to discuss two very important things. What is dissociation and what is integration? You can't even see that on the board, but I've written it. In order to understand dissociation, we first have to understand integration. In the context of dissociative disorders, integration is the organization of all different parts of the personality, including the sense of self. Imagine your personality is an orange. See, with someone without a dissociative disorder, this is just it. This is all of you. This makes up all of your ego states and segments of the self to create you your personality. But when you have a dissociative disorder, your personality remains in segments. Everyone is born with a huge amount of segments to themselves. So how you think, how you feel, how you do. I am hungry, I am thirsty, I need love, I need comfort. It goes on. But as you get older, these pieces of yourself integrate together and become a full orange. They become a full personality that you're kind of able to access any time. You can access any of these segments flawlessly and without any issue because they're all kind of a part of one. They're all you. But with DID, trauma interrupts its natural integration and so parts of this ego remain separate. In simple terms, people without DID become an orange but people with DID remain segmented. This is the absolute basic understanding for the theory of structural dissociation which you will no doubt hear about in future videos. Ultimately, a goal in recovery for people with dissociative disorders is to bring down the gap. <laughs> Bring down the gap between the segments of the self. I mean that, that one's just, that one's going to be a really difficult gap to bring together. <laughs> but by bringing down the spaces in the gap it makes it easier for us to access this pieces of personality. In order to do that, we need to trauma process to bring down these natural dissociative barriers, which is no easy feat. So if you're used to living your life as a segmented orange, and then your choice is, well, you have to bring up all the trauma that you don't remember or you forget, um, in order to get better, that's a choice for somebody to weigh up. and. That's certainly not a decision to be made by anyone else but the person with a disorder. We adjust and adapt our personality to situations. We all get that I have a home self, I have a work self, I have a mum self, a brother self. Or, and we've all heard people be like, you know, I have a day self and I like a party hard self. I mean, within our orange, or personality, these are simply the flexibilities of our personality. We reorganise our personality and adjust to our surroundings. But understand, no matter how pleasant or unpleasant a situation has been, that situation has still happened to me in that moment. So no matter what kind of part of my personality I'm flexing, that happened to me and I know that. Dissociation however is a major failure of integration that interferes with and changes our sense of self and personality. Trauma and disorganised attachments affect and interrupt that natural integration that we have in childhood of these ego states. If a child cannot fight or flight, they may dissociate and later may have an inability to recall what happened to them or feel like the situation happened to somebody else. People with dissociative disorders are a little bit like Schrodinger's cats. They simultaneously both know and don't know what they've been through. Even if they cannot recall what's happened, another part of them, sort of deep down, may be able to. This is how dissociative disorders act as a natural built-in barrier for children. It's an incredible defence mechanism. It allows them to continue on in life not knowing what they have been through, while another part of them holds onto these memories away from the surface. These divided responses of the self are called dissociative parts of the personality. The part that continues on in life and doesn't know any more is called the apparently normal part. Their job is to just get on with life and get on with things that happen to them. And the part that holds on to these memories is called the emotional part. Dissociation itself is a common awareness that affects everyone in some degree. You may recognise these common dissociations when I mention daydreaming or highway hypnosis. This is a normal occurrence of dissociation. 
But the problem is when this spacing out starts to interrupt daily life. This is when it starts to become a disorder. Ultimately, a goal for people with dissociative disorders is to bring down these gaps between the segments of the self in order to lessen distress and improve functioning. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed our very first lesson on dissociation and integration. Our sources have been from PODS, the Positive Outcomes for Dissociative Survivors, DID-research.org, and this incredible book called Coping with Trauma and Dissociation um, by Suzette Boone, Kathy Steele, and Ono van der Hart, which were basically the creators of the theory of structural dissociation. I highly recommend this book for not only those with a dissociative disorder, but of course therapists and anyone just wanting to know more. It's like simplistically explained, but there is a lot of information in here, if that makes sense. It's the best of both worlds. So this has been lesson one in our Educated project. And if you found this interesting, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really does make a difference. And if you'd like to support the project further, we do have a Patreon page. And of course, we would love to thank all of our amazing supporters for helping us get this far. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you very much. See, this is supposed to be a really nice metaphor, but peeling back the layers of your self is proving very, very difficult. Ah, I squished in my eye! Oh my gosh!